Hey guys, we have yet again this month of January 2024, another big weekend of astrology coming at us. Uranus is stationing direct in the sky this weekend. You guys, this is really going to amplify the Uranian Aquarian energy that is already kind of experiencing a power surge right now. This is probably going to be a weird weekend. Things are probably going to be kind of strange all over the place. Expect the unexpected, especially when it comes to what people are saying and how people are acting. Not only do we have Uranus stationing direct this weekend, but Uranus is stationing direct in a trine aspect to Mars and Mercury, who happen to be in an exact conjunction in the sign of Capricorn. Words, Mercury, information, messaging, what is coming out of people's mouths, and Mars, action, activity, what we're doing, how we're behaving in the trine to Uranus, in its station, in Earth signs. I'm telling you guys, people are going to be acting strange. People are going to be shocking you with their actions, with their words, with their behaviors. And this is not a weekend where we want to try to exert any type of control over this craziness that's happening happening around us, okay? Adapting, going with the flow, looking for silver linings, staying focused on our personal process of transformation and change right now. This is where we're going to receive the most benefit working with this energy, trying to control the external circumstances unfolding around us. This is not where we want to put our focus this weekend. I will tell you guys though, there are some very big indications that the changes that are happening now despite how unsettling they may seem, despite how much they are upsetting the comfort zone or the status quo, they are blessings in disguise. There is some type of gift or good fortune or, you know, luck, success, something intertwined, interwoven with the way that things are being rearranged now. So have faith, you guys. Look for the silver lining in things. Do not attach to the immediate impression that you might be getting about some type of unfolding event or circumstance. I'm telling you, we're going in a good direction. Let's get into it, you guys. Lots of astrology to talk about. Closing out this month of January. Lots of Uranus, lots of Aquarius. Um, let's, you know, see how all of this is coming together for us and what things could look like, feel like, be like, kind of, maybe, perhaps, as we go through the course of our weekend. Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Friday, January 26th, 2024. My name is Aubrey. This is your astrological outlook of the weekend where we are narrating the shift of the ages. This weekend, yet again, we have a lot of astrology to talk about, big energetic activation underway, and we have our last retrograde planet held over from our last retrograde season. Stationing direct, what this means on some level is there is uh, momentum moving us forward. And honestly, like, you know, before I really get into the flow of this report today, I want to say we're going to want to like pump the brakes a little bit if we can. The more self-regulating, okay, self-disciplined, okay, um, and like pragmatic sort of we can be in the energy right now, which is likely to be, you know, full speed ahead, you know, very little breaks, just wanting to rush forward with some things. I do feel like this is going to benefit us moving through this energy. Uh, one of the themes actually of the way that our, you know, transitional process into this stronger Aquarian energy right now, I feel like is manifesting is in the context of it's like entry entrance exams is where I sort of feel like we're at uh, energetically right now, right now. Like we're kind of being, you know, we're, we're, we're getting our first taste of these stronger Aquarian vibes and frequencies that are going to start, you know, pulling in heavier over this next 20 year period while Pluto is, you know, now in the sign of Aquarius and we are moving further, you know, forth into the stronger age of Aquarius energies that are pulling us towards the future. Um, I think think that there's a level and a measure of like wisdom and understanding that is going to need to play kind of like an integral role in our actions, our behavior, our choices. And obviously 
as we enter the stronger Aquarian energy, which is an air sign energy, which is about like understanding our ability to understand our processes and to use our mind properly are going to become like very, very important. And the way that I feel like this energy, if you guys have been watching my reports all week, I've been talking about how there's, it's like, there's this, you know, this energy that is like really lighting a fire under us or really pulling us forward or really like driving us towards some type of like active phase of initiating something starting something new moving forward somehow but it is also I feel like representing kind of like this jump the gun type of energy and we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves sort of like caught in the vision or the ideal or the potential that we see coming you know as we move in this direction before the process of you know everything that we need to do to get to that place has necessarily come to pass uh as we proceed forth into this Aquarian energy with Pluto, this Aquarian generation, this Aquarian also uh, upcoming 2000 year period that we are moving towards. And you know, some say that we've been in for a while, some say that we won't be in it for another couple hundred years. We will come to find that the way that we are using our mind and the wisdom and the understanding that we are applying in the context of whatever we're creating or moving towards is going to hold greater weight and gravity now that we've got Pluto in the sign of Aquarius. It's like we're in this entrance exam. It's like, are we at a place right now as we are moving towards this energy where we are able to take the wisdom that we've gained from experience and apply it in terms of, you know, what we are moving towards and the choices and decisions that we are going to make in the context, okay, of maybe this hyper stimulation or this excitement or this potential or this opportunity or this growth. Like, are we at a place now where we can, you know, be self-disciplined and uh, self-controlled and also simultaneously you know open to possibilities and potentials and thinking outside the box and able to apply wisdom from experience from the past in a way that is you know conducive to the growth but not neglecting like the pragmatic like realistic stuff that's happening now or are we going to experience this influx of this new energy and this hyper stimulation and this um you know uh just electrified sense of like mental energy and these these high heightened levels of mental energy and stuff like that um are we just gonna sort of like gung go forward gung ho like saddles blazing you know what i mean like um and bite off more than we can chew or overcommit or over invest or um you know just sort of throw caution to the wind and you know streamline ahead and then come to find out you know we made a mistake like we uh we forgot something like we didn't see a red flag somewhere that ended up like having us shoot ourselves in the foot or something like that and then having to you know learn from these experiences gain a greater level of understanding you know that things are not necessarily even though you know something might look really beautiful and have a really great potential it doesn't necessarily mean that you know that potential is ready for us to harvest it right now okay so I feel like there's going to be this uh lesson or introductory process where we're kind of or you know like I said like this entrance exam type of energy where universe is sort of like testing us right now like look at what it can be look what you can be like look at the potential of this look at the potential of that look at this opportunity look at that opportunity um but how are we going to move towards it right are we going to just like take off and like go grab the shiny object and like through that process set off like the series of booby traps that we have to move through and learn all of these lessons in order to like not make those mistakes again so that when we actually do go to move towards that potential uh we we take the right steps and we do it right so that it can be solid and long lasting and you know come into that manifestation in alignment with the highest potential of of that potential that is to me what this chart is giving okay there is definitely um an element of you know saddles blazing like I said like this need to get ahead like we're moving forward like definite especially also with Uranus stationing direct now all of these direct planets like this definite forward movement forward motion momentum something new something fresh you know Pluto at zero degrees of Aquarius unlimited possibilities uh for potential in the future and people are going to be very excited about it like very exhilarating okay feeling like awakened from some deep slumber right brought back to life 
life. That's what this Uranian energy does. Also, it like you know, it's going to cause things to stir deep within us. It's going to like awaken us from any soul slumber that we may have been on for in for, you know, lifetimes. And it's going to activate our mind and it's going to give us a mental charge that really inspires some type of action. And we know this because Mercury and Mars in exact conjunction in Capricorn in the trine, Earth sign trine to this energy as it's coming together. It is just indicating some type of like release or launch forward towards, you know, a phase of active initiation or like mental energy that is driving this action, this movement, this behavior, okay? And of course, you know, the Aquarius, the Uranus, this is all about like awakening to something authentic, like awakening to a personal truth. Mars uh, with Mercury, Ray, right, having to do with the mind and the self. And then also the North Node right now in the sign of Aries. We've been talking about this. The, uh, the North Node and the South Node are also in square to Mercury and Mars in their conjunction. The Mercury and Mars are major players in the energy this weekend and, um, you know, the way that this Uranian energy is functioning. And that also is telling us, you guys, like, lightning fast, lightning speed. Like, we're not only talking about Uranus, which is the lightning planet. Like, this is things happening split second, right? But Mercury and Mars, this is also, like, high octane instantaneous like very very high speed mercury is the fastest moving planet and mars is like the fire planet this is all about speed so i'm telling you guys like things this weekend are likely to happen quickly and the uranian energy the awakening energy the strangeness the unexpectedness the shock factor this is going to have to do with mercury and mars right thoughts conversations speech you know what people are saying what people are thinking and mars the action component of things action behavior what people are doing so don't be surprised if people are acting like extremely out of the ordinary and the energy this weekend and blowing your mind surprising you just shocking you with either things that they are saying things that they are doing things that they are thinking about saying or doing um this is, you know, in an energy where classically we say expect the unexpected. If there was going to be one thing I would say to expect, you know, like I would expect people to be acting very different than normal. And don't think that this is a phase, you guys. Um, you know, we're talking about right now a dynamic period of transformation, awakening, you know, authenticity, personal truth, personal mission, destinies being... Uh, understood and activated within us like soul callings right that we are needing to you know answer and move towards because of something that is like stirring like deep within us that is becoming undeniable um so as a result of that okay like if we're looking for a root cause for why people are likely to be you know acting in shocking or unexpected ways that is why it's because of this very personal and also very collective realignment like back to uh um an authentic center okay and also this you know hearing the call of the soul type of thing going on uh that can't be denied anymore it actually when I was preparing my report today um and thinking about that particular concept and like how I feel like this Uranian energy is likely to be kind of like playing itself out in a lot of people I don't know um I don't like use movie examples and stuff like that a lot because honestly like I don't really watch a lot of movies or, or anything but the movie Frozen 2 I don't know if any of you guys have seen it but there's this um like the the main basic storyline of that movie is Elsa the character the one you know with the frozen powers she starts hearing this song okay and she can't like get away from it like it just starts happening and like it, it's distracting her and it's just like like she starts obsessing over it and she's like gotta figure out you know where this song is coming from what it means and she realizes like if she moves in a certain direction it gets louder and so she sort of like goes on this journey to follow this song that is like coming from within her that she like cannot 
like turn her back on and what it ends up doing is unlocking all of these secrets about her past that have essentially held her and her entire world basically like in this karmic trap sort of and because you know this period of time comes along where everything aligns and she begins to hear this call on this deeper level and she goes on this journey and she you know discovers these secrets she's then actually able to like release the the that karmic burden okay that had been keeping things a certain way that were not in alignment with the potential that they were supposed to grow into in terms of you know their whole essentially like frozen little world where they live and it um through discovering okay these secrets of the past through following this call of the soul she essentially changes the entire future and unlocks the destiny of her land and of herself and of her sister um like with the highest potential of like what they were always meant to be but couldn't arrive at because of this you know thing that happened in the past that created this blockage to moving forward so it, I do feel like it's sort of like that, except for in our personal lives and like happening in the real world, this facilitated realignment that's promoting natural growth and order, like saving the future from the past microcosm extrapolating to a macrocosm like and again that's what I talk about in terms of you know how Aquarian energy operates in and of itself as well especially being ruled by both Saturn and Uranus it has a lot to do with finding freedom or releasing ourselves from karmic burdens or karmic limitations as a result of some type of awakening or gaining a greater awareness or um you know, through an understanding of the past or of that karmic loop or situation, being able to be released from it to arrive at that higher point of evolution or to unlock that greater uh, destiny uh, that is, you know, moving forward with the true cosmic blueprint and like the evolution of things and stuff like that. So really deep stuff, you guys. Um, but I feel like that's the way, honestly, that this energy is functioning we're individually playing our parts as we move through this period of time especially over this next you know 20 years with this Aquarius generational energy coming in breaking these karmic cycles and writing past wrongs that created blockages to growth and that's also what Uranus does and that is the function of a lot of these transformations and changes that are happening right now as well and again it's also being spoken about through the position of the nodal axis right now the north node in Aries this personal mission that we've got to go on and we're gonna have a north node Chiron conjunction coming up here soon I talk about this too it'll be a feature of our 2024 energy this is a personal hero's journey that's exactly like what I was just talking about that like you know that character Elsa went through following this call of the soul discovering all of these truths overcoming and eventually being released to a greater state of mastery in accordance with higher potential higher plan um and things being able to be how they were meant to be before they got off course by whatever you know karmic wound was created and that's again we're talking about chiron wounded healer teacher master archetype um so and we just finished this nodal transit of the nodes through Taurus and Scorpio which was a karmic detox process also leading us to this point and now we're being released with the Pluto Aquarius energy um and all of the strong Uranian energy that is pulling us forward into the future so you know the in individual experience extrapolated out to the collective I'm like probably going to make for some strange times probably going to make for just some weird uh situations happening with people as we sort of all kind of seek to find our footing and you know rediscover ourselves and the way that we are going to relate and behave and interact with our reality moving forward i'm telling you people are about to start making some really big shifts like this is twilight zone energy that we are moving into um and it's going to happen fast and it's going to happen unexpectedly it's going to hit out of nowhere and you know the mars mercury situation i'm telling you guys like conversations information um the interactions that we're having with people just not going to be what we're used to there's just going to be something unusual 
it's just, it could feel weird. And we're probably going to feel weird too. On Friday, the 26th, actually, we have the sun and Jupiter coming into an exact square. We also have a Leo moon that is squaring Uranus right before Uranus stations. This is a lot of fixed energy that's being amplified. People are going to be real stubborn, real willful. We also have the Mars Mercury. There's something about ego too, you guys. Like people could be over identifying with the ego, inflated egos going on. We have to remember another thing, you know, as this energy plays out, especially this weekend, we are not our ideas. We are not our opinions. We are not our thoughts, okay? They are just a facet of who we are as a person. And a lot of people are going to be like wearing their ideas and their thoughts and their opinions and their arguments on their sleeve or like, you know, sewn into them and like really, really over identifying their ego, their self, okay? The Mars energy with the mind, with the ideas. And therefore, you know, conflicts, fights, especially over ideas, like people being hyper defensive about stuff if they feel like their ideas or their positions are being threatened in any type of way, right? Verbal attacks, informational wars, uh, battles for narratives, debates and arguments, really primed for this type of thing. But I will say this is also a strategically brilliant energy. We have Mars and Mercury in a trine to Uranus stationed in the sky. There is is no better energy for like lightning fast mental processing. Super sharp mind, super quick witted, like highly, highly intelligent, like genius level mental activity that we have playing out going on as well, capable of creating these truly, you know, brilliant solutions, brilliant remedies to things, um, inventions as well. This is also giving, you know, real like mad scientist vibes. <laughs> of course, I've got to say like the mad part because we're talking about Mercury and Mars in a conjunction. A lot of times this can just be a little bit more hot headed energy or just a little bit more zany wild energy also with the trying to Uranus. But inventions, you guys, like we are heading towards a technological revolution. Like we could probably never imagine. I'm telling you guys like sci-fi world we are on the cutting edge you know on the brink of that it is definitely coming over this next 20 years with pluto now in the sign of aquarius you know for better or for worse i do for the most part think that is going to be a lot of good stuff that is coming of course you know the pluto aquarian this is also maybe like the darker sides of technology and stuff like that as well that we will have to be aware of but i don't really think that you know there's a lot of kind of like fear porn type of stuff associated Associated with some of this technological revolution energy that we have coming in but with the decentralized power structure that is going to be the force the dominant force in the way that things are structured over this next period of time I don't think that it's a, that much of a th you know I think that it's we're going to have personal choices and decisions more so than you know we think that we are coming out of this Pluto Capricorn energy okay but we are you know this is giving like totally like mad scientist vibes and if you find yourself or feel yourself sort of like just mentally obsessing over something that you're working on something that you're building some type of project that's underway or that you're just like hyper focused or concentrated on you know something that's captivating your interests this is definitely this Aquarius Mars Mercury energy and use it you guys but we do need to keep the ego in check like I said you know over identifying too much with the ideas our personal ideas is not just the best way that we can use this energy. The best way that we can use this energy is to better ourselves somehow, to use it to apply to, you know, creating solutions or working towards that personal upgrade that universe is kind of like demanding of us right now. We can get a ton, a ton, a ton of productivity out of our energy if we direct it towards ourselves, transforming, upgrading our lives, right? And um, defending ourselves, you know, our viewpoint, our perspectives, our opinions, our positions against stuff like these really are just distractions. If we look at the value of the energy that's coming through in terms of what it can do to help us, you know, become the person who we need to be moving forward to achieve these great things that our soul is calling us towards right now. Um, making personal growth a priority, making that our work, our mission, our focus, instead of arguing or debating with other people and getting into ego battles and stuff with other people again like this is also though a facet of like what I was talking about in the beginning of 
using our words with wisdom, are using our mind wisely or applying experiences from the past in an informed or, you know, wise way that is actually like helping us to pursue this process moving towards the future instead of allowing ourselves to like get hyper attached to an outcome, you know, by way of uh, like our ego somehow that actually hasn't happened yet. And then maybe having to go through some of the setbacks or some of the challenges or some of the booby traps that we've unleashed on ourselves because we, you know, got we counted the chickens before we hatched. Like that keeps being the, you know, phrase that's coming back to me when I think about this energy because, and I've been, I've been just like saying this over and over and I hope I'm not repeating myself too much. It just keeps like coming up. And I feel like, you know, if it keeps being on the forefront of my mind like that, I feel like it's, um, you know, probably collectively important to keep in mind right now. And I'm also keeping this in mind in terms of, you know, what's, you know, my personal life and stuff like that, but just not getting ahead of ourselves, not overestimating the potential of things. And it's not that it doesn't exist. It's like that potential, that outcome that you see, like that final result, like that idealization of, you know, whatever you know that the thing can grow into, like you're seeing that for a reason. You wouldn't be seeing that if that potential wasn't possible but just because you know that's the potential outcome that potential is what will be if everything happens according to the right process it doesn't mean that that process has happened yet and therefore it doesn't mean that that thing is now what it could be once that process has already happened so we don't want to attach to things that don't exist yet just because they could and then like, I just feel like that's a mistake that a lot of people are going to be making. And we don't need to make that mistake if we take our time with things, if we make sure that we are staying focused on the task, on the work, on the process of getting there instead of just, you know, acting like that result has already happened, even though we haven't gone through the process necessary to get there. And I hesitate to say that because one of the, you know, primary components of the process of manifestation is being able to, you know, act as if and act the faith and feel as though the final outcome has transpired, even though it might not, not necessarily have unfolded yet. But that I feel like is different, like being able to feel that future while still acknowledging the present reality and knowing that the process of getting there has not unfolded yet, I feel like is different than assuming the outcome that, you know, hasn't happened yet. And, you know, talking and acting and making choices and decisions based on, you know, this ideal or this hope or this aspiration or this potential that hasn't come truly into fruition yet. What I'm saying is I think that we should, you know, prepare for that part, prepare for that future, do our part like now of going through a process of like personal upgrade, personal evolution that is moving us in that direction, that is helping us to be a reflection of where we need to be for that potential to come into fruition. But it's like, we just don't want to, you know, totally jump the gun on things before at least that process has started to unfold or until we're very, very clear and sure that that is in fact, what we're looking at. There's a lot of energy right now. I mean, we're in Uranus energy, you guys. Things are not what they seem, you know, for better or worse. Things are going to seem a lot worse than they are right now. And things are also going to look a lot more certain than they are right now. People are going to be going all in on things. And this is, you know, this is what I, this is another way of describing the same thing, right? Like people are going to be going all in on things based on like a presentation that, you know, looks very lovely and they can see how the whole situation is going to come into fruition. But like, we're in a season of expect the unexpected. Like things are not going to go according to previous patterns. Also, like we're in the cycle breaking energy, like the way that things have functioned for long periods of time now are they're going to change. Like we're, we're in a, a season of dynamic transformation and we can't necessarily, you know, rely on past precedents the same way anymore to predict future outcomes.
So I hope this is not super confusing, <laughs> you know, in this Uranian fashion, like I'm kind of like darting all over the place, but I'm really just trying to describe this concept of like not over investing in, you know, something based on a potential that hasn't like gotten its footing to come to that potential yet. I feel like people are going to be doing that getting in over their head and then having to learn lessons and i've been talking about this like as we're moving through this period of time traditional rules traditional structures uh regulations authority systems of control are going to begin breaking down as well and it's really just going to unleash the floodgates on this forward movement forward momentum this high speed high velocity high dynamism high shock factor though very unpredictable very insecure like unsteady type of vibes but also limitless potential limitless opportunity and we're just going to need to be able to discern okay um we're gonna need to learn to discern uh the significance of process in the context of arriving at potential um and i don't know i don't know why i keep being so like heavy about that but it literally it like the past three reports I've done it's just been something that I feel like I like can't get too far away from and I keep getting like pulled pulled back so um you know this is going to be as I've said a very erratic energy okay uh impulsive spontaneous reckless willful determined very fast paced things happening of course lightning speed blink of an eye these instantaneous changes right but it's obviously like you know, as a part of that fantastic energy for making changes, speaking, thinking, acting differently. If you've been, you know, needing to reinvent yourself, there has literally never been a better time in the past 240 years. So people are going to be doing just that, which is why we can't expect the normal behavior and thoughts and actions from people generally. Twilight Zone, like I said, uh, for better or worse, okay? There's also likely to be this like sense of inner knowing that the things that are happening right now are for a purpose, you know, happening in divine timing, happening in divine alignment uh, on a deeper level even if they don't seem like the best things that are happening there's a likely to be just like this sense of inner inner knowing that it's for the right reason like it's the right thing is happening somehow um on saturday this is the day where we have uranus station the 27th uranus stations at 19 degrees of taurus that sabian symbol is the sabian symbol for 20 taurus when we're looking at the symbolism associated with the degrees we always round up a degree we look at the wave of energy that's coming in not the wave of energy that's you know waning out and dissipating 20 taurus that sabian symbol you guys know it if you've been following along it's wisps of wing-like clouds are streaming across the sky, electrifying the airwaves, right? This mental charge, Mercury, Mars, Uranus, trying streams of consciousness accelerating. And it is going to be, I mean, we've also got Jupiter in the square to the sun, in the trine to Venus, in the sign of Taurus as well. Uh, Uranus in the sign of Taurus. Like I said, this is ruled by Venus. I talked about this earlier. Venus trine Jupiter, you guys, for Uranus's station in Taurus. The, and also with the sun in the square to Jupiter, though, you know, it was exact on Friday. It's, you know, they're, a, they're an orb a degree off on Saturday, but still blessings in disguise are indicated. And the degree where Venus is as well, when you're in a stations she is at uh six degrees of capricorn that sabian symbol is 10 logs lie under an archway leading to darker woods so you know changes yes you know we may be going on that journey right but we're gonna have the resources necessary to light our way or to provide whatever it is that we need to like help us safely get through that journey so no worries you 
guys. No fear. In the face of the tower crumbling, we know that blessings in disguise are associated with this. This is actually going to lead to a much more successful phase of life for us somehow. These are adjustments that are taking place that are actually removing blockages to our own growth. Universe is actively, actively making the changes for us that we haven't been able to make for ourselves. And with the Mars Mercury, this could be making the changes to our mind, our thought processes, our way of thinking, our way of acting, our way of communicating, our way of speaking, um, our way of asserting ourselves generally. Like there literally could be some type of reconfiguration of you know, the way that our mind is working generally that is associated with that. And if the way that our mind is working, you know, on these electromagnetic levels as a result of these frequency-based changes that are coming in right now is taking a hold of us, that is obviously going to alter the behavior patterns and the like whole being of the person, of the individual, which is going to make them act weird, which is what we are seeing uh, this energy describe, okay? So better outcomes are coming through the changes that are happening now. Expect the unexpected, be flexible, right? Adapt to circumstances, do not at attach to preliminary judgments and appearances about things. Things are not what they seem when we've got this strong Uranian energy. Trust God, trust spirit, trust universe, expect positive outcomes that is something that like i'm personally a practice that i'm like going to be undertaking much more seriously for myself moving forward through this uh pluto aquarius energy expecting always expecting the best possible outcome always expecting good things to happen um you know and having no doubt that even if things don't seem to be as i would want them to be that this is actually a setup for something better than i had wished to you know or hoped to experience i feel like that's important uh, the mind is going to be a very, very powerful creative force in manifesting our experience now that we have Pluto in an air sign, especially the sign of Aquarius, the sign of the future. Um, we want to use the power of our mind to create the future that we prefer to have unfold and um our mental energy is really powerful right now so i think expecting the best especially in the face of challenges this is gonna be of benefit especially moving forward also and committing to our personal growth like i said as well changing things that are not working actively initiating processes of change in our own lives to you know facilitate whatever has been hindering us or things that have been bothering us or things you know that we've been caught up on for a long time as well you know consciously breaking cycles and bad habits and stuff that you know we just know isn't good for us we're going to be very supported in these endeavors and it will be easier to do this type of thing, to break addictions, to break bad habits, to break patterns and cycles that we've been in for long periods of time, it will actually be much easier to do this in this energy than we would ever have expected, okay? Um, and don't try to force outcomes. That's another thing that I've been talking about right now, or that I've been feeling really strongly lately with this whole like jump the gun, counting the chickens before they hatch type of energy. Uh, and all of the, you know, the dominating like um the mars mercury the leo moon the jupiter square like in all the planets direct also now like really trying to force growth force pro uh productivity like force things to happen in a premature manner we don't want to do that even though like i said you know there's likely to be this drive or desire to do so to control an outcome especially if things feel out of our control or to create the potential that we're seeing but that hasn't gone through the process necessary to come to pass yet to like attaching to that premature potential in a way that becomes you know self-sabotaging or like shoots us in a foot somehow as well okay um not committing to unattained ideals would probably be a more eloquent way of saying that but you know we want to balance our optimism and our excitement and our enthusiasm about the potential and about the possibilities and about you know all that could be and could come our way uh in the future with this sense of pragmatism this sense of realism and this focus on the goal and the task at hand baby steps you guys like one foot in front of the other 
this is a marathon, okay? This is not a sprint. This is gonna feel like a sprint. This is gonna feel like the quicker that we get out of there and the quicker that we get the dust get to our destination, the faster that we're going to have that outcome that we strive after. But I think what we're going to come to discover is that's not actually the way that it's going to work. I think that, you know, if we do that, what we're moving towards will be more like a mirage, okay, than the potential that we you know, originally saw and like the more that we take off and like just go gung ho forward, I feel like it'll probably like feel further and further away the more and more we like rush towards it. Whereas if we practice self-discipline, practice self-control, keep ourselves grounded, even though there's that shiny object over there and we feel like all we need to do is just walk up and grab it. Um, putting one foot in front of the other, right? Like the, the tortoise before the hare type of situation, uh, doing the work to get that outcome, going through that process that leads to that result. Like that's how we get there, okay? That's how we get to that potential, not by trying to jump all the steps that are actually required in order for that potential to come into fruition. We want to live in the present, right? But prepare for that future outcome and the potential that we desire, you know, to the best of our ability. We want to make ourselves into the person that lives that reality, that lives that potential or that reflects that potential through our personal upgrades and the work that we're doing on ourselves and the step-by-step -step process that it takes to get there. But we are just not expecting it to be like instantaneous without the work in the process that evolves us to that place. Okay, so that's what I'm going to say now. Energy for the weekend, Uranus direct, uh, this real strong dominant Uranian energy that we are in right now. People are going to be, you know, spinning out of control, but we want to pace ourselves, right? And I'm telling you guys, like, staying focused on the work, taking things one step at a time, not rushing forward, being excited, be excited, be optimistic, believe in the potential, have faith that things things are happening to move you in that direction and that you are going to achieve that goal. And it probably, I'm telling you with a Venus Jupiter trine here too, it's probably going to be even bigger and better and more beautiful and more blessed than you anticipated or imagined, but we want to do things right. Okay. We don't want to just get caught in this, um, you know, uh, caught in this whirlwind or this electricity or this lightning bolt of newness that's coming in right now and set ourselves back because we're just rushing forward too quickly. So that's what I'm going to say, you guys. Let's get a synchronicity card now. Ask God's spirit universe to give us one additional piece of guidance, information. What do we need to know in this hypercharged, electrified atmosphere, energetic atmosphere this weekend? What can it benefit us to keep in mind? Uh, what should we tell ourselves as... We move through this energy. This whole month has been super intense. We've got two cards. Keep the faith, you guys, and forgive. This is where we're at. All right. Forgive. Be not afraid for the pestilence that walk in darkness. Psalms 91. You are in the dark when you indulge in depression, feeling sorry for yourself, anger, or ill will. When you condemn yourself or others, these are pestilences of the darkness. Anger towards others reflects your emotionally charged state emotionally charged, right? You violate the law of harmony and it will bring you trouble. Forgive yourself and others and how God in your midst to heal your anger. Pray. Thank you, God, for removing my anger. Mercury and Mars in a conjunction, you guys. Anger, uh, hostility, right? Aggression, like I was saying, these fights and conflicts that are likely to be going on and happening, especially over ideas. People are likely to be having short tempers this weekend. People are likely to be, you know, being kind of like aggressive and hot-headed and like bull-headed and stuff. Very stubborn, determined, fixed about things as well. And uh, yeah, 
this whole anger thing, probably some really good advice accompanying especially the Mars Mercury energy that we have this weekend and keep the faith. Like I was saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Psalms 23, 1. God is within you and watching over you. You will see evidence of this fact in your life very soon. If you cannot see it this very second, go on forward with confidence. Everything is working together for your good right now. That's what I was saying, you guys. And to me, that concept, everything is working together for my good right now, perhaps despite appearances, perhaps despite the way that it feels, perhaps, you know, despite what I might personally think in this moment, everything is working for my good. I'm expecting the best outcome. And you know, because I'm expecting it, it will be so I have no doubt in my mind, this is the future that I'm creating. And I'm going to in the meantime, before I've gotten there yet, I'm going to put like my work, my concentration, my focus and my effort into, you know, making myself the best that I can be as a part of the process and my, you know, movement towards that eventual outcome. So keep the faith, you guys, no fear. Okay. And forgiveness in the face of, you know, there could just be some people dealing with some serious anger this weekend. Uh, and we just don't need to attach ourselves to that. Okay. So that's what I'm going to say, you guys. I uh, hope you guys liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, you guys. If you think that they would enjoy narrating the shift of the ages with us, leave me comments. I love you guys. I am very grateful for your feedback. Uh, if you guys are having experiences that line up with what I'm talking about in these videos, please let me know in my comment section below. That is very valuable information to me talking about the value of information moving into the age of Aquarius. And I am very grateful for everything that you guys have to say and everything that you share with me. I love you so much. Thank you for being here. If you want to know what's on this whiteboard, I have a Facebook group linked in my description box where I post pictures of that. Jana Shulman also posts the pictures of the synchronicity cards if you want to see them closer. So that's where you can find that and come back with me on Monday. You guys, we are closing out this month of January, moving towards the month of February, Aquarius season. Here we come. I will be here to talk about it. You should be here too. You do not want to miss it. And I will see you next time. You guys have a very beautiful weekend. Uranus direct and until Monday. Bye.